This video introduces ideas of beauty and cuteness as these aesthetic categories inform Frankenstein and other primary texts for this class. It also addresses the problematic centrality of the cute and the beautiful to our contemporary society. A first-person narrator like Victor Frankenstein is always potentially unreliable, as much seems to be the case when Victor describes the moment when his newly made creature parts the curtains on Victor's bed and gazes upon him. Victor writes, he held up the curtain of the bed, and his eyes, if eyes they may be called, were fixed on me. His jaws opened, and he muttered some inarticulate sounds, while a grin wrinkled his cheeks. He might have spoken, but I did not hear. One hand was stretched out, seemingly to detain me, but I escaped. While Victor construes the creature's actions as dangerous and horrifying, the passage also represents a familiar human scene, that of a child looking at, trying to speak to and touch a parent. What is this passage but a scene of a new life seeking out connection and love from another being? The creature's impulse to connect takes us back to the frame and Walton's desire, as he puts it, to find the company of a man who could sympathize with me whose eyes would reply to mine. I bitterly feel the want of a friend. Perhaps Shelley introduces this concept early on to encourage us to recognize the horrible situation faced by the creature who cannot connect to and receive love from his very creator. And why does the problem exist? Why does Victor reject the creature from the start? Has the creature done anything wrong? No. His plight entirely concerns how he looks. His problem is one of appearances. Victor set out to make a human being, but what he ends up with, purely due to its looks, is something that Victor cannot conceive of as human. In other words, in Frankenstein, Shelley is interested in the role of surfaces, of visuals, of physical appearances and aesthetics, in how society defines human identity. Shelley indicates her interest in aesthetics everywhere in Frankenstein. Just two examples pertain to Elizabeth Lavenza. We learn about her exceptional beauty when she was adopted by Victor's parents, and Elizabeth herself takes pains to distinguish two sisters in terms of one's beauty and the other's ugliness. Aesthetics, and especially physical appearances, have been an important concern in our readings, from Alison's Blazon to Shakespeare's epideictic poetry and even Equiano's narrative, which in chapter one stresses how the European idea that white is beautiful is not an objective fact, but relative to Western norms, since in Africa, black is beautiful and white is ugly. Such issues of beauty and aesthetics inform contemporary life in ways we might not always be comfortable acknowledging. For example, in the case of charitable giving, of the question of how to solicit donations to particular causes, it turns out that actual neediness is not the bottom line when people decide to give to causes. Instead, donors go for visual pleasure. A premium, in other words, is placed on beautiful and cute charitable objects instead of the most needy objects. Thus, while an adorable panda may receive funds, tough luck for the giant golden mole. The most influential scholar who is working on these issues right now is Sean Nagai at the University of Chicago. She publishes on the cute, the zany, and the interesting. In the case of cuteness, Nagai analyzes that aesthetic category as it relates to capitalism, arguing that cuteness is closely tied to commodities and consumption. For example, when choosing a fruit snack, these Costco snacks may be cheap and healthy, but the somewhat cuter Annie snacks, or even better, gummy bears, will be purchased and consumed more. Nagai's argument shouldn't seem too surprising to us, given what we know about the long history of aesthetics in England. We know, for example, that a blazon is all about consuming something visually. Work like Nagai's makes clear that Shelley in foregrounding aesthetics and looks is hardly being superficial, 
but rather engaging a huge social problem that tragically can even be a matter of life and death. The next video will turn from contemporary aesthetic categories to the dominant theory of the beautiful during the period when Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein.